The recently passed House Bill 2908 provides $8 million to the Department of Corrections to help them attract more employees through pay raises and other incentives. As Rory Taylor reports, it's a step towards addressing a significant staffing shortage within the DOC. In the last three years, Oklahoma has gone from number one in the world for incarceration to dropping back behind Louisiana and Mississippi, states that over the last few years also saw significant declines in their prison population. In 2018, Oklahoma had 1,079 people incarcerated out of every 100,000 Oklahomans. That number has dropped by 41 percent to 640. But even with that reduced inmate population, State Representative Justin Humphrey says that the prison staff are shorthanded. I fear that we have a very, very a severe shortage in the correctional officer staff. And what you look at, if you look at a historical um, background and a historical look at prisons, when you get that short of staff, then what happens is you have uh, more contraband get into the penitentiary. You have inmate on inmate violence. You'll get inmate on staff violence. Bobby Cleveland, director of Oklahoma Correctional Professionals, agrees that the system is short on staff, citing long hours and additional costs to the state. We're shorthanded. We're working guys 12 hours straight. And when I say 12 hours straight, they have no lunch break. They get no break. They have to eat on the run. And, and also uh, we have uh, some, in some places they're working 16 hours a day, two days a week. We spent uh, $18.4 million this past year on overtime, which was up 44% from the following year. Overtime that Cleveland says leaves officers overworked, snowballing into burnout. An hour to get there, hour to get back, that's 18 hours. If you're working 16 hours, if you're working 12 hours, 16 hours and you don't get to see your family well your your tension is going to get you you're going to have some tension there it's just natural so it could fall back onto the inmates too in an effort to call attention to the situation representative Humphrey has called for a state of emergency to be declared and what I meant by that emergency I didn't ask for the governor to call out the National Guard I didn't ask for the Department of Corrections to go on lockdown but what I was asking for is that we as legislators and the Department of Corrections uh, do not wait till the next session to address this problem. So what exactly is the scale of the issue? Justin Wolf with the Department of Corrections says that's hard to nail down. We can tell how many staff we have right now at any given time and the number of correctional officers that are available on a given day or who are on our roster. We also know that we have funding for positions that aren't filled on a given day. Uh, that number fluctuates month to month as people hire on and leave the Department of Corrections for various reasons, things like retirement. So at the end of May, that number, we had 314 funded positions that were currently vacant. But Wolf says those fluctuations in funded positions, as well as variants of staffing from facility to facility, makes exact staffing needs hard to pinpoint. In order to do so, the department is running a full staffing analysis, taking inventory not only of where there is need, but also where there might be waste. As things like cameras and door technology and surveillance technology increase, those staffing needs change at our facility. And so what we need to do is go through each facility, each post, one by one, and evaluate what the needs are at that post for appropriate security according to ACA standards. The DOC says the analysis is necessary to properly correct staffing deficits. Recently, the legislature has given us $8 million to improve our correctional officer to inmate ratio. And so this will be a step in the right direction there. But until we have a complete returns on the surveys that we've sent to staff asking what they intend to do after the closure, we really won't know the direct impact of that. Oklahoma Correctional Professionals hopes that $8 million staffing grant goes not just towards paying new salaries, but increasing existing pay. We got a bill to add for $8 million to hire. So we're trying to get that $8 million bill, use that to retain, to give a raise to our officers. Right now we're at 1574 to start out. Well, we need to get that up to $17 to $18. Cleveland says the current starting pay for DOC officers of $15.74 an hour in a potentially dangerous environment isn't enough to compete with other employers. No one wants to go to work for $15.74 an hour when Amazon's paying $17. McDonald's is paying close to, close to that. Of course, the DOC is looking into additional factors affecting recruiting. 
one of the things that is impacting us more and more is that you're not allowed to have a personal cell phone on you while you're in a prison facility. Uh, that provides a significant challenge to younger persons who are used to and grew up having a cell phone on them 24-7. The DOC is currently doing surveys and has a focus group dedicated to making the job more appealing to Oklahoman workers. Rory Taylor, The Oklahoma News Report.